Supply chains under pressure. Titanium supplies are shrinking and production lines are, well, frozen. Why is China moving to tighten its control over one of the most critical resources in modern industry? Titanium? If Beijing decides to impose a full-scale export ban, it could cripple Western industries overnight. Sectors like aerospace, defense, and perhaps most alarmingly, robotics could come to a standstill. Right now, titanium is a foundation of high-tech production. It's used in everything from military jets to medical implants. But the West has allowed itself to become dangerously dependent on China for this essential metal. The result? Entire industries are now vulnerable to sudden disruptions. We've already seen China flex its muscle by restricting rare earth mineral exports to the West, using them as a tool in trade disputes. But if titanium is next, the impact could be even more devastating. How serious could this get? Let's break it down. But first, if titanium disappears from Western supply chains, who falls first? Stay with us. Titanium isn't just another material. It's stronger than steel, lighter than aluminum, and highly resistant to corrosion. That's why it's essential for some of the world's most advanced technologies. Let's start with defense. Take the F-35 fighter jet, already one of the Pentagon's most expensive programs. It contains hundreds of titanium parts. The United States Navy's submarines, titanium hulls, spacecraft missiles, even body armor rely on it. If titanium supplies are cut, Western military production would freeze. Then there's robotics. Here's the issue. Titanium forms the backbone of high-end industrial robots. Companies like Boston Dynamics, Tesla, and ABB need titanium for critical parts. Without it, production delays would be severe, and costs would explode. The bigger problem? The entire dream of bringing manufacturing back home, using robots to power domestic factories. That vision could collapse in a single blow. But is this just a worst-case scenario? Or is China already setting the stage for a ban? That's where things get more interesting. Automation has been the West's answer to rising wages and labor shortages, but no titanium means no industrial robots. A robotic arm used in auto factories? It needs lightweight but strong materials, and titanium is the best choice. If China shuts off titanium exports, the West faces a double crisis, no titanium, no robots. And without robots, the future of domestic manufacturing grinds to a halt. Could we just switch to steel or aluminum instead? In theory, yes. But in practice, it's complicated. Steel is just too heavy. It would slow robots down and raise energy costs. Aluminum, on the other hand, is too soft. It can't handle the stress. So is the West trapped? Or are there alternative sources for titanium? Let's take a close look at where the world's titanium actually comes from. The global titanium market is, honestly, a geopolitical trap. Together, China, Russia, and Kazakhstan control about 65% of global titanium output. According to the International Titanium Association, China alone provides 35%, Russia adds 25%, and Kazakhstan chips in another 5%. But these countries don't just dominate raw titanium mining. They also control the high-grade processing needed for aerospace, defense, and advanced robotics. China's Baotai Group is the largest titanium producer in the world. It supplies a massive share of the titanium sponge, which is the raw form of titanium that Western nations really need. By comparison, the United States produces less than 5% of global titanium supplies. The Pentagon itself relies on foreign imports for 85% of its titanium needs. So the big question is, if China cuts off exports, where does the West turn? Unfortunately, options are extremely limited, and each alternative comes with high costs or political risks that make a quick solution pretty unlikely. Japan might seem like the next best source. Companies like Toho Titanium and Osaka Titanium Technologies lead Japan's titanium industry, producing about 15% of the world's high-purity titanium sponge. But here's the catch. Even though Japan is skilled at titanium processing, it still depends heavily on raw materials from China and Russia. This creates a supply chain bottleneck that Western countries just can't easily avoid. According to the Japan Titanium Society, Japan produces around 40,000 metric tons of titanium sponge per year. Compare that to China's 210,000 metric tons. It's clear who holds the advantage. Switching to Japanese supply would likely trigger price hikes of up to 40%, making industries like aerospace and robotics financially unstable. And there's another problem. Japan's titanium companies are deeply tied to China's supply chain. If Beijing imposes a ban, Japanese producers could face indirect pressure or material shortages too. 
In short, Japan isn't a real escape route. Africa holds some of the world's largest untapped titanium reserves, especially in countries like Mozambique, South Africa, and Kenya. These reserves mostly come in the form of ilmenite ore, which is one of the primary sources of titanium. But even if the West tries to shift its supply chains to Africa, there's no real escape from China's grip. For the past decade, China has been locking down exclusive mining rights across Africa through massive investments under the Belt and Road Initiative. Today, Chinese companies like the China National Nuclear Corporation and the Lohman Billions Group control over 70% of Mozambique's titanium mining projects, according to African Business Magazine. Take the MoMA titanium mine, for example. It's the largest in Africa, yet 90% of its output goes directly to China, where it's refined and transformed into aerospace-grade titanium. Yes, Western companies like Tronox Holdings and Kenmare Resources are present in these regions, but their production levels are nowhere near enough to balance out a potential Chinese export ban. At the end of the day, even if raw titanium comes from Africa, China's control over refining and processing keeps it inside Beijing's sphere of influence. Titanium isn't just another metal. It's irreplaceable in many modern industries. Its special combination of lightweight strength and corrosion resistance makes it critical for building high-performance robots, especially in fields like AI-driven automation and surgical robotics. Alternatives exist, but they come with major problems. Steel is too heavy, which reduces energy efficiency and slows down robotic movements. Aluminum doesn't have the same durability, which leads to more frequent repairs and maintenance costs. Carbon fiber composites have been tried, but they lack titanium's heat resistance and are much more expensive to produce at scale. According to the International Federation of Robotics, global industrial robot sales hit 553,000 units in 2023, up 5% from the previous year. China now leads the world, making up 52% of all new robot installations. If China were to ban titanium exports, it wouldn't just raise costs for Western manufacturers. It could force them to redesign entire robotic systems, a process that could take years and cost billions of dollars in research and development. Right now, there's no substitute that can match titanium's combination of affordability and performance. That makes China's potential export ban a direct threat to the future of Western automation. For years, China has been building control over the full robotic supply chain, from rare earth minerals to semiconductor chips. Titanium is the last major piece in this puzzle. Through its Made in China 2025 plan, Beijing has already invested over $150 billion into subsidies to boost domestic tech and manufacturing. Companies like CS Robot and Automation and DJI are rapidly expanding their robotics production capacity with plans to quadruple output by 2030. By restricting titanium exports, China doesn't just hurt its competitors. It pressures foreign robotics firms to move their production into China, effectively forcing them to share intellectual property and technology secrets with Beijing. Western companies like ABB Kuka and Yaskawa are already deeply dependent on Chinese-made components. If China pulls the trigger on a titanium ban, it won't just disrupt supply chains. It could reshape the entire global robotics industry. Meanwhile, the aerospace industry faces its own titanium crisis. Even though the West has imposed sanctions on Russian titanium, aerospace giants like Airbus, Boeing, and Rolls-Royce have continued sourcing titanium through third-party countries such as India, Turkey, and the UAE. Russian company VSMPO Avisma, which supplies one-third of the world's aerospace-grade titanium, has found ways around the sanctions by setting up re-export agreements. According to reports, Airbus CEO Guillaume Fori has actively lobbied the EU not to expand titanium restrictions, warning that cutting off Russian supply could cause a production crisis worse than the global chip shortage. Boeing, after briefly halting Russian titanium purchases in 2022, has reportedly looked for alternative routes through Southeast Asian intermediaries, according to Reuters. The simple truth is this. Western aerospace and robotics industries cannot afford to lose both Russian and Chinese titanium supplies. If both Moscow and Beijing cut exports, there is no backup supply large enough to prevent a global industry collapse. Recycling titanium sounds like an option, but honestly, it's just not practical at a large scale. Unlike aluminum or steel, titanium requires extremely pure processing. And right now, only about 5% of titanium scrap is recycled worldwide. In short, the world is kind of walking a dangerous tightrope. 
and titanium is the critical material keeping it balanced. According to Titanium Metals Corporation, both the United States and Europe lack the proper infrastructure to recycle titanium at any meaningful scale. At the moment, there are only a handful of facilities capable of refining titanium to aerospace-grade quality. This has, you know, created a serious gap in supply chain resilience. The Pentagon has already pushed for more titanium stockpiling, but current reserves would only last somewhere between 12 to 18 months in a major crisis, far less than what's needed to guarantee long-term stability. Industry experts argue that this shift towards strategic stockpiling should have started years ago. Unfortunately, with China now considering a possible titanium export ban, many believe the window for preparation has already closed. The aerospace and defense industries are set to suffer the most if a titanium shortage unfolds. Aviation would face massive delays and honestly skyrocketing costs. Airbus and Boeing, the world's largest commercial aircraft makers, source over half of their titanium from China and Russia based on industry data. Take Boeing's 787 Dreamliner as an example. That aircraft alone contains more than 14 metric tons of titanium used in everything from the airframe and landing gear to critical engine parts. Any serious disruption in supply could cost billions of dollars and lead to production delays of up to five years. Defense contractors are in the same vulnerable position. According to the European Aerospace Industry Association, companies like Lockheed Martin could face dramatic slowdowns. Their F-35 fighter jet, a key part of U.S. air power, is made up of 40% titanium by weight. Pentagon officials have warned that, without a steady titanium supply, F-35 production could drop by 30% within two years. This would severely weaken NATO's long-term defense capabilities. The problem is that the U.S. still imports about 85% of its titanium, leaving it heavily exposed to potential export bans from Beijing or Moscow. Now, while the construction sector also uses titanium, especially in bridges, skyscrapers, and industrial machinery, the situation there isn't quite as critical. According to the Global Construction Review, builders could switch to alternatives like high-strength steel or aluminum, but doing so would raise material costs by 20 to 30 percent, which could delay projects or, you know, force developers to absorb the extra expenses. However, in more specialized areas, like nuclear power plant construction, where titanium is needed for corrosion-resistant piping and cooling systems, finding alternatives is far more complicated. Analysts from Wood Mackenzie warn that a long-term titanium crunch could add $10 billion per year to global infrastructure costs. Even so, the biggest and most immediate threat remains in aviation and defense, where titanium is practically irreplaceable. Right now, the West is facing a critical moment to secure its titanium supply chain, but the available options are both limited and expensive. The U.S. has started looking at domestic mining projects in Utah and Colorado, but due to regulatory and environmental challenges, these reserves could take over a decade to develop. Meanwhile, the European Union is trying to lock in titanium trade agreements with India and Brazil, but these talks are still in the early stages. For now, alliances with Japan and Australia offer the most realistic short-term solutions. But even these don't fully make up for a potential Chinese export ban. At the same time, China is tightening its control over the titanium market. If Beijing goes through with strict export limits, Western industries will be trapped in a supply chain nightmare with no fast solution. Titanium isn't just another material. It's become a tool of global power in the race for technological and industrial leadership. The West is running out of time. Without immediate action, China will end up controlling the future of robotics, aerospace, and defense. We hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and check out our next video that's now on your screen.